hundred thousand more dollars. But now somebody else has gotten those books. But we can't limit the knowledge just on those one or two books because I believe the most high has a vast knowledge and that we can't just only stick in those little books to get wisdom. I, no, I, I, that's why I don't. That's why that's where me and certain certain groups branch off. Mm-hmm. Because you have like certain groups of Hebrew Israelites that believe that you only need to study the Bible. Mm-hmm. That's not my thing. I like to study the Bible and get a lot of stuff. That's why I get a lot of stuff from. Mm-hmm. But I have to take it outside of that book into yeah, different yes, encyclopedias and scientific books and medical books. I got a stack of just medical books. I use in medical school. <laughs> then once I get the stuff from there, like I got to take it to the experimental. To see how it works in people now. Because it's one thing to get it from a book, and then it's hypothetical, it's, it's, it's theory, it's theoretical. Now we gotta apply it to people and see if this is gonna work. So. Alright, so this is Francisco bringing in again for another educational video. So, um, we're going in, I'm Minister Inky, Blood Plasma 101. Point A to point B if it wasn't a plasma taking them in. 
because once you're in the crying glands or, or any of the glands that secrete a hormone secreted, it secretes it into plasma, and the plasma has to say, okay, come on, let's go over here. This is where you belong. Okay, boom. Like how Hakeem functions. Hakeem puts people together. Oh, you got the herbs? Oh, okay, you need the audience? Okay, I'll bring y'all together. That's what plasma does for hormones. So it takes the hormones from point A to point B. Uh, also, you got, um, in terms of hormones, you have a cascade of hormones that have to be produced in the plasma. So a lot of times when your body is checked to see if you have adequate levels of certain hormones, like vitamin D, for instance, they check your blood plasma levels. That's the test that they're run. So if you want to see if you got the right amount of vitamin D in your body, they'll check to see if you got X amount of nanograms per milliliter, depending on whether you're white, black, male, female, of vitamin D floating around in your plasma. So that's the key to understanding the body of the plasma. When you look at the eyes, it's the, the plasma. First of all, you have what's called a photon, right? That's how light travels, photon. So when the photons, depending on the angle and the speed that they hit the eye, all right, that creates a bit of information, and that's relayed to the brain first by the fluid behind the eye, which is plasma. In your ear, at the bottom of it, you have plasma that changes the sound into something. <laughs> Now, 
So she gave us the Alchemy commercial, good commercial. And um, we actually went on tour together, the, the Black Genetics tour, talking about the nitrogen and all that stuff. Where can we find the Alchemy? Well, I'm talking about, I'm not on without, without going to a sports. Yeah, AboriginalMedicalAssociation.org. All right. Wait, wait. Medicalassociation.org. Good question. That's a good question. Get us back on track. Um, we need more chairs. I want a chair. No, no, no. Uh, you talk about blood viscosity. Love viscosity. What do you mean by that? Blood viscosity is the test that they use. But what I'm just demonstrating here with the blood viscosity is how they use language to keep us in the dark. So instead of saying something that everybody's familiar with, like inflammation, they're changing to say blood viscosity so that you think it's something different. But it's the blood viscosity, which is a measure of all of the different sedimentary objects, the things that's floating in the plasma that creates the inflammation. Oh. And one of the biggest things that creates inflammation is our good old buddy, right? For those of y'all that have been with us studying, our good old buddy, Who's our good old buddy? Who's the usual suspect we got problems in the body? W? Worms. 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 White blood cells. White blood cells. Oh, yeah. There yeah, we yeah. go. Our good old buddy, the, the white blood cells. The ones that carry the positive charge. The ones that are not natural in our body. I can't wait till white folks get that one. <laughs> um, so, one of the things, I mean, they just, every time you look at them, they always up to something. They always up to something. So, um, the new thing, which is the old thing, but one of the things that they're talking about now is, go ahead, Jess, what, what do I got that? In regards to the protein. Right, in regards to the protein. Well, it's specific. He said, um, a specific protein. type of protein, though. Specific type of protein. Uh huh. Globular protein. Correct. Globular protein. What does globular mean? A combination of cells of proteins no. together. Globular is simply just the shape, the molecular structure of the cell. I mean, of, the, of whatever it is. So because it's round, it's a sphere, it, it comes under the, the title globular protein. Right. But there's a bunch of different globular proteins, and they're not all bad. For you. No, they're not. The only ones that are in the blood or the plasma that cause problems are the ones that come from white blood cells. And the specific name for them is immuno. Immunoglobulins, I believe. Glob Globulins. Immunoglobulins. Cause a ton of problems in your body. All right? So your question is going to make you think of more stuff, good. What constitutes the role of the white blood cells? The positive role of the white blood cells, sir. We were talking that was like good. Mistalked. Right, that that was the star of the show in terms of your immune system. They say that was, they some say it was like the first line of defense, you know. Well, here, here's what the white blood cells do. And it's almost like how um, how you gotta look at a relationship. You know what I mean? Like if you if you if you're a sister and you get with a brother and you know you move him into your house or you're a brother and you get with a sister and she move into your house, right? That's what we're talking about. You're the, you're the homeowner, it's your apartment, right? So you're with somebody you wanted to move in. You wanna look at because nobody's perfect. Right, everybody got their ups and downs. So what you're looking at is what they contribute that's beneficial versus the headaches they cause. Same thing with white blood cells. What white blood cells do, being that they are cannibals by nature, is that they eat anything that's floating around in your body that does not maintain a high level of So basically, your white blood cells is your enemy. White blood cells is cannibals. They're good then when you're sick to eat the illness, but 
just subtract that. I like they're not good for you. They just go out and eat your cells. Charge anything forward. Not just forward. Anything that loses its charge. Mm -hmm. Because even when parts of your body lose a charge, the white blood cells eat that. That's where you get autoimmune diseases from. Okay, so if you're losing the charge all throughout your body, you will have lupus because the white blood cells will just be running all over eating everything. All right, if you have type 1 diabetes, the white blood cells are able to get into the pancreas and eat the beta cells that are in there because they have lost their charge. If you have, um, I mean, so all these autoimmune diseases, if you lost the charges inside your biochemistry, and these white blood cells are like sensors and, and says, oh, I, I don't like machines like from movies. <clears throat> I don't have any readings for life. We will dispose of this. Like some crazy ass shit like, oh, throw that away, it's broken. So this thing just goes around and just cleans out, but it's like brainless, so it doesn't really do much thinking. It has a small program that's written into it. There's a ton I can think of. Um, Hashimoto's uh, autoimmune disease. That's where the white blood cells are now eating the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland. Um, uh, what is it? Para para nocturnal oxyurea or something like that that's where the, the white blood cells have actually started to eat the red blood cells so it's like a whole host like it, there's no limit to what the white blood cells will eat anything that doesn't have a charge they'll eat what would stop them from eating it well when your body is properly electrified and you have a high charge there's nothing that they can eat your eyes not, red blood cells. not just red blood cells because it's about the charge it's really about getting your plasma right. So you need more copper. Right. So Get your plasma right. Just more copper. You do need more copper though. Copper is important and copper is overlooked because people talk about the high amount of nitrogen in our atmosphere and the high amount of nitrogen pumped in our food, whether you're eating meat, fish, chicken, whatever. Anytime you break down a protein, you release nitrogen into your body. All right, because that's what makes up a protein. So I'll put that right here, just so we get it. So every right. time you eat meat, you release nitrogen into your body. The O stands for oxygen. When you add oxygen or hydrogen to oxygen, you have water. Let's put it like that. Right? When you add carbon to hydrogen and oxygen, you have a carbohydrate. Now, the moment you add nitrogen to carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, you have a protein, or an amino acid, I should say, but I'm going to write down protein because it takes up less space, all right? Protein is a bunch of amino acids, all right? That's a group of amino acids, all right? So once you start to break down the protein and you break this down, you're releasing this nitrogen throughout the body, all right? So the, one of the things that the liver does is the liver grabs that nitrogen, converts it into urea, sends it to the kidney, out the bladder as urine, all right? And it can do that all day, every day without making a high. Problem is, is when we overwhelm the body with too much nitrogen, then you start to have things go wrong in the body. You start to have seizures, which is glutamate built up on the brain. Glutamate is another word for nitrogen or ammonia. Uh, anytime you add nitrogen to hydrogen, you have ammonia. So that's a big problem in our body. All right. Anytime you add nitrogen to hydrogen, you're going to get ammonia. These are basics that you get into the N3H, whatever, whatever. But the basics is nitrogen and hydrogen is going to give you ammonia. So when you have a lot of glutamate on the brain, you can have seizures, epileptic fits, etc. When you have... Um, um, when the kidney gets overwhelmed with um, ammonia or uric acid, it can slip out of the kidney back into circulation and crystallize and you start getting uric acid crystals built up. That'll give you arthritis and gout. Come old crystals are large in the joints and stuff. Yeah, I know. 
I know, I know. Now, really, you mentioned that I tell my mom every day, keep chilling the phone. But when you have ammonia, and you have ammonia and bleach, you know you can make tear gas, right? So, do you think that also, just ask him, with ammonia and you have that bleach, white bleach crap, and you eat some protein with the bleach stuff, don't you think some of that can similarly happen in the body? A, a lot of, that's a good question. That sounds like it wasn't a good question, but that is a good question. A lot of times we pay no attention to how we mix chemicals and how that winds up in our body. Because we don't really pay attention to the chemicals in the food. But we do produce poisonous chemicals secondarily in the body from ingesting poisonous toxins separately. And then the way we eat, we mix up the food. So we might have some toxins in the, in the greens, some toxins in the chicken, and then drink some soda with a little formaldehyde mixed up and put that all in there and you know it, it get crazy from there. So that's like food, food poisoning is like say if you like you just like eat a lot of stuff like you can get food poison like that um bacteria virus germs etc all right so um this i just wanted to put down the supplemental so we we'll see what's going on with the white blood cells in the various areas of the body um so there's a lot of different things that the white blood cells do to understand that relationship to take it back there that are detrimental to the body that far outweigh it's eating up bacteria and viruses and things like that that come into the body. So that's what they're talking about when they stress the role of the white blood cells in terms of your immune system is that so small bacteria and viruses and things like that that come into the body, the white blood cells would eat them. However, we know if the white blood cells would be efficient at doing that, then we wouldn't have a whole bunch of problems that we deal with in the first place. Like you wouldn't have a cold, because the cold is a, a foreign strain of RNA or DNA that comes into the body and starts to give you an infection. Where the white blood cells at when that happens? Where the white blood cells at when they like to constantly retroactively them and as they go down to the They somewhere else. They don't, they don't want no they don't, in fact, in fact, usually that's how viruses move around through your body. White blood cells actually carry them throughout the body. So they so a virus can go in your body and catch a white blood cell like a cat and tell it to go wherever it needs to go because usually your body is sealed. Your body is sealed. So the only way for a virus to really get in um, outside of you voluntarily putting it in is uh, breaking the skin or something like that. Or exchanging some fluid. Something you gotta you gotta unless you have a break somewhere Bacteria can't really get in. That's why most infections come in through the respiratory system. I'm, I'm dealing with an invader now, but um, what can nourish that T cell to help it to combat the, the, you know, Well, the to get rid of um, viruses, um, you just want to limit their ability to colonize your body. So it, it's not necessarily a matter of catching one. We have viruses and bacteria that live in and on us. That All right, let's get into the next one. I try to cover as many areas as I can on my sh Um, The information was fragmented all over the globe. We can't retrieve this information from one particular Thor to one particular system. This brother Iggy brings something very interesting to the table when it deals with this health. Um, the first question, I want to allow the brother just to go, on, on, go in on what he goes in on, but I seen this interview with Farrakhan on the Breakfast Club, Brother Inky, and he was talking about the vaccines and how they're purposely making vaccines to um, destroy and kill the black the black males. For some reason, he said the males, not just black, he said black males. You got an amazing, specifically, you got an amazing book there. I know you deal with that in your book, so I want you to answer the question, but explain Explain it in reference to what you're dealing with in that book so we can understand exactly what's going on. Let me pass the mic to Brother Ink. Good looking, good looking. First thing I would like to say is thank you to Brother Rich and thank you to all the folks at home that support Brother Rich's platform and Brother Rich's um, DVDs, etc., etc., etc. It's very important that not only you support us, but you support the people that package and bring us to you. So, in regards to what uh, Farrakhan was talking about, it is a uh, long overdue conversation, and I'm 
I appreciate the fact that Farrakhan has brought that to the forefront of black consciousness right now. Um, for a long time, there's been a serious concerted effort to hinder our ability to reproduce ourselves. So now, the homosexuality takes on a whole nother, in fact, I got another book. I gotta show you this, Rich. This, the other book I got, the Detox and Regeneration book for the 40 Day Fruit Fast. I have in the back of the book, the experiments that they did how to turn a penis into a vagina. Let me just show you this real quick. I mean, I'm gonna show you this real quick. With diet. Let me go grab this. Now this here is Black Genetics 2, Detox and Regeneration. You can get all these books from 40dayfruitfast.com, right? Talks about the food, all that kind of stuff, what to eat, what not to eat, blah, 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 blah. It's not why we have this here on my lap right now. What I want to do, in fact, I just want to show you guys the pages. Once you see the pages, the pages are going to speak at the volumes. So I'm going to let Brother Rich just hold this for me real quick. And I'm going to show you guys some of these pages. We're walking hormones, stress levels, etc., etc. Now we're going to get to a point where I'm going to show you, okay, so now we enter Africa, all right? These are the types of people they ran the experiments on, this family right here. What type of experiment, Minister Inky? Through diet, all right? What the science is now called nutritional genomics. That's the science of how food switches genes off and on. So with that understanding, they went and they practice 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 makes perfect and they learn how to turn you see that i don't want to be graphic but that is a penis all right so they study how with food alone to take your penis all the way back to a vagina this is the technology they had the understanding of your body that they had 40, 50 years ago, almost 100 years ago, all right? How to take that penis and walk that bad boy back to a vagina. So now, there's a quite a few problems that we have to address as a people. They're only able to develop those type of systems after investing billions and billions and billions of dollars into studying black people's genetics. The only problem with that is black people are not studying black people's genetics. So we are at a serious disadvantage that's not going to go anywhere because your genes are controlling your behavior, your personality, how you network, how you operate. Your genes are not the end all be all. Your DNA is not the primary cause of life. It is not the end of existence. Your DNA, your genes do not turn themselves on and off. You have UV radiation, you have earth signals, you have radiation from other living organisms. All of these things combine and operate your genetics. What's happened through diet and technology is we've been isolated from our environment and from the natural signals our body has to interpret to all these synthetic ones, hence the problems, hence the explosion in homosexuality. Now, Farrakhan was right on time because, and that's with the Black Genetics 3 book, because it talks about estrogen and xenoestrogens.